It's so Pac-12, isn't it, yeah. that you've got this <laughs> catastrophic failure in leadership that leads to the d- demise of the conference. A 108-year conference goes kaboom, and yet the last year is this incredible year on the field with these incredible subplots. It's just, it is classic Pac-12. The dichotomy between on the field and off the field, between smart de- coaching and bad leadership. Uh, I mean, it's, it is rich, man. It's like Macbeth. <laughs> you have a Heisman Trophy returning winner. You have probably four or five quarterbacks that are going to be taken in the first few rounds. And all everybody is saying is, man, that conference is so screwed up and they're blowing up on every corner. It's you a couldn't, I mean, it, it, you can't write it. Uh, yeah. This is not a Hollywood script at all. It is, it is, it's Pac 12. It is the Pac 12. Okay, so a few weeks in, let's get to on the field. A few weeks in, I'll get over to Colorado in a minute. The fact that Fox is going back there and ESPN is following them and leaving Penn State high and dry. I think all that stuff's funny. But you look at it a few weeks into the season, John. The best chance of the, because there's so many schools that are in the undefeated space in the Pac-12, the best chance to be in the CFP. And could we have, John, Follow me here. Could we have more than one school in the CFP? It's supposed to be the SEC every year that gets more than one school. Well, I mean, we're sitting here at almost a quarter poll, and there's a lot of options, John, for CFP. There are a lot of options. Getting more than one will be tough, right? Because you, again, the the precedent is you got to be thirteen and zero or twelve and one. Mm-hmm. Could the Pac-12 get through this? Where the conference champ? The only way that can happen is. If there's an undefeated team playing a one-loss team in the conference championship and the one-loss team wins, right? Which means somebody would have to get through undefeated the regular season, which hasn't happened in the Pac-12 era. The last team to do it was Oregon uh, before conference expansion. I don't think that can happen, but certainly Washington. I mean, to me, Washington and USC have the best chance uh, Oregon, Oregon State certainly think they got a shot. Colorado probably does too. But there's going to be, you know, a, a significant amount of eating your own that takes place starting next week. September 23rd is when conference play really heats up. So I don't see it, but certainly there's a scenario in which it's November 1st and the playoff committee's rankings start coming out every Tuesday. And the Pac-12 has got two or three teams in the top eight Mm -hmm. that have a path to get to the playoff, depending on how they do in November. And there have been many years where we've gotten November 1st, and the Pac-12 hasn't had anybody in in contention for the the playoff. This year, there could be two or three. It it really uh, gets back to this incredible dichotomy between the the off-the-field and the the on-the-field. Yeah, I mean, Utah's got to be in that mix, too. And we don't know about Cam rising. Utah already has quality victory. You look at the, how the Utes yep. have gotten off the, the, to their start. Um, and, and the big thing, too, is in that with the, you know, if we're talking about the playoff backdrop, the Pac-12 hasn't had any bad losses. There have been no losses to the FCS. There have been no losses to the group of five, right? The losses are to Oklahoma State, Auburn, and Mississippi State. So, and then if you look to this week, Washington is the only team that's got a real challenge. They play at Michigan State. Everybody else is playing games they should win. Pac-12 could get through the non-conference season without a single bad loss, and that will help the resumes of the teams that are competing for the playoff bids. 